Who wins when the heroes fight? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. It's time to finally tell you the tale of Civil War II. Our tale begins with a man running through the forest, out of breath and scared. Scared of what he is becoming. He trips over a branch hitting the ground, and he helps himself up, using the tree next to him, asking, Why won't it stop? How can he stop it? and he hears a voice behind him say his name. Ulysses? He turns around to see Medusa, Crystal, and the rest of the Inhumans. We're the Inhumans, and we can help. This is a good thing. Cut to Manhattan. Our heroes, fallen, bloodied up, and ready to fight to their deaths. Amongst a big celestial in the middle of the city, the Avengers look up at it, ready to hold the ground solo, only to be surprised when their backup finally arrives. The rest of the Marvel Universe! The battle for New York against the Celestial begins with every hero arriving and holding off the drones, giving the magic users of the Marvel Universe the chance that they need. Doctor Strange leads the charge as they use their combined magics to hit him with everything. And every Everyone watches as he vanishes. They've won with minimal damage and loss of life. That's it. It's over. The world is saved. So Tony Stark tells everyone, party in my house. Drinks are on me. Everyone celebrates until the question finally comes up. How did the Inhumans know about this attack? How were they able to warn everyone? Medusa brings the key members of the heroes of the Marvel Universe into a room and introduces them to Ulysses. The poor kid is starstruck. I mean, there's Tony Stark and Steve Rogers right there. He's such a fan of every one of these heroes. Medusa explains that she knows the Inhumans keep to themselves a lot, and they keep their own secrets, but she wants them to be more involved and open with every one of their comrades. So, Ulysses explains that he can see the future. Tony right away asks for a little Jean Grey, the time-displaced younger version. She sits down with them and tries to create a private mind space for the two of them so that she can read his mind, and she quickly discovers that she can't read it. Ulysses thinks he did something wrong, and she tells him it's not him. His mind is a closed system. Ulysses looks at the heroes asking what that even means. And Captain Marvel steps forward, asking him if he'd like a job. Or is he exclusively working with the Inhumans? She explains that her team, the Ultimates, could use his abilities, much to the dismay of Tony. Really, Carol? We meet one Inhuman who can read the future and it's a closed system and that's enough for you? It was good enough for you yesterday, Tony. Yesterday I didn't know anything about any of this. Would you have changed your mind? Steve Rogers steps forward. What's on your mind, Tony? Nope, not gonna have a morality debate with you, Steve. It never ends well. And Carol steps back in. Morality debate? How is this a moral issue? You have an inhuman who can possibly see the future, but we have no idea what his deal is, nor do we know what probability ratio he's working with. If at the end of the day, everyone is alive, isn't that the right thing to do, Tony? Tony asks Ulysses his story, and he explains that he had a vision of the Celestial. He then ran into the woods where he was found by the Inhumans. He explained what his visions were, and everyone saved the day. Tony thinks about that. Okay, so we have a guy that comes out of the woods stating, Oh my god, I have a vision of the Hulk making out with Ultron and a baby popped out and the baby was Hitler. Spider-Man raises his hand. I'd pay to see that movie. No doubt, but do we stop the Hulk before that happens? Do we lock him away before he does something we don't like? Yesterday was easy. Big cosmic monster doesn't invade. No harm, no foul. But what if the next one isn't easy? What if the next one is one of us? Depends, Carol tells him. And after a little more arguing, Tony leaves them to it. The night continued on and the Inhumans went back to their base, where Ulysses woke up in the middle of the night to another vision telling Medusa to get the Ultimates. A little more time passes and Mary Jane walks into Tony's lab to tell him it's Rhodey. Tony turns to ask if Rhodey is here, and she looks at him sadly. He's gone, Tony. He suits up and he rockets off to the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters demanding to know where he is. He's brought into a room that is covered with black curtains to keep out the onlookers, and he sees a body with a sheet over him and the destroyed War Machine armor next to him. He walks out furious, demanding to talk to Carol to find out what happened. And he finds her, bedside to Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk, with her eye bandaged up. He stops and he asks if She-Hulk is, but Carol tells him she's alive, but in critical condition. It was Thanos. Ulysses saw a vision that he would invade, so he brought the fight to him. In the fight, he shattered Rhodey's armor and he critically injured Jennifer. What was Rhodey even doing with you? He wasn't on your team, Carol. He was on campus and he volunteered. Tell me you at least got Thanos. He's in a cell down below. Mission accomplished. Tony storms out telling them that he's going to end this. No one is going to play God again. But before Carol can get up to go get him, Jennifer's hand reaches out and she tells her, fight for it. It's our future, not his. Then she passes out and the machines all flatline. 
Tony didn't go home, he went to end this. And to do that, he went right to the home of the Inhumans. He kidnapped Ulysses and he left a decoy so that no one would chase him. Medusa saw it as an act of war. Tony Stark declared war on the Inhumans. But before they could act on this, Carol showed up asking Medusa to stand down. Let her go to Tony's and get Ulysses back for them. Meanwhile, Tony took Ulysses to a lab demanding to know how his powers even worked. He began to run brain scans and ask the obvious questions. Are your powers biased? Are they altered by something racial, sexual, or political? Are you seeing things from a pure state or are they altered by your upbringing? And Ulysses has no idea how his powers work. And then the alarms go off telling them that there's been a security breach. Tony walked over and untied Ulysses and he began to brush off the dust. All right, kid, act like you were having fun. And then the wall is blown out by Thor's hammer. Carol stands there. You kidnapped this kid from his home. Tony smiles and he puts his arm around Ulysses. Come on, it's not like I tortured him. He tortured me. A little bit. Carol tells Tony that she thinks he's having a nervous breakdown. Oh, you think I'm having one? Well, it's not a little nervous breakdown. It's a complete and total nervous breakdown. But as they begin to argue over Ulysses again, a vision comes across. One that Tony predicted, kind of. Ulysses sees the Hulk murdering the superheroes and standing over their bodies. And this time, everyone experienced it as well. Ulysses' powers were growing stronger. Carol didn't waste any time going to Bruce Banner's lab, where her and Tony both asked him if he had been doing any experiments that were gamma-related. Currently, Bruce Banner can't turn into the Hulk as Amadeus Cho took that power away from him. But that doesn't mean he's not doing research into why he's not able to turn and into gamma radiation in general. He wants to know, and Tony sees that and asks Bruce to step outside so that they can all have a little chat. Once they get outside, Banner sees every hero there and he asks, Oh God, what did I do? That's the thing, Tony tells him. You haven't done anything. They explain that there is a young inhuman that experiences visions from the future, and Banner puts it together quickly. You have a moral dilemma. Wait for me to hulk out or prevent it from happening. Tony explained that they're split as to what to do, and Carol tells Banner that they have proof that he's been experimenting on gamma radiation again. Hank steps forward because he hacked into Banner's systems, explaining, Banner has been experimenting on himself again. Banner, of course, gets mad. You broke into my home. You stole my work. And you accuse me of something I haven't done. And that's when an arrow comes out of nowhere, hitting Banner in the head, instantly killing him. All of the superheroes saw the arrow come out of the forest, and they rush over to see who shot it, to find out where it came from. And they find Clint Barton, Hawkeye there, with his wrists out ready to be arrested. Now he's in court as a trial is going on, and the judge is going to decide. Did Clint actually murder Banner, save everyone, or did he do both? And after everyone explains what happens, Clint goes up to the stand to tell his side of the story. He explains that a little while ago, Banner came to him with a box, telling him that it had been a year since he had turned into the Hulk, a whole year. And he told Hawkeye that if he ever turned again, he wanted him to use this box to kill him. He explained that it had to be Clint Barton because he's the only one of the people that Banner knew that could live with the act. Clint explained that as Banner was growing angry, he saw something in his eyes, something that showed him that Banner was about to turn. The judge has a difficult decision because so far, the visions have all proven accurate. If they are accurate, then Hawkeye saved all of the superheroes and in turn saved the world. But if they're false, if there's even a hint that Hawkeye acted prematurely, he committed murder. Since the death of Bruce Banner, Carol has been using the Inhumans' visions to accurately prevent over a dozen potential incidents around the world. The judge asks Carol, have any of them been false? Well, no, not really, she explains. As Tony sits there waiting for the verdict to be handed out, he looks back at the readings from Ulysses and he realizes something is horribly wrong. Carol went to go see Jennifer Walters as she ended up pulling through and she told her what happened, that Clint Barton killed her cousin Bruce. She sits up in bed wanting to know what was the result. What did the judge deem? Carol can't even get the words out as her eyes begin to well up with tears, and anger begins to glow in Jennifer's eyes as she demands to know the answer. Barton was acquitted. Hawkeye walks. While this is going on, Carol tackles a woman as she was leaving a building, and they take her briefcase away from her by force, causing the first misinterpretation of Ulysses' visions. She saw that woman as a Hydra agent, and in that briefcase was a bomb. But, in actuality, the briefcase was completely empty. Meanwhile, Tony doesn't know what to do with his information, so he decides to call the heads of the Marvel Universe to explain. Ulysses takes everything in from the entire world, all of the energies and the thoughts. He creates a possible future from those visions. He's basically an algorithm that takes all of the data and says what could happen. But he's not seeing the future because it isn't there. He's using math and it's all guesswork. So I've decided to call all of you together. And that's when we see that he's talking to Medusa, Steve Rogers, Carol Danvers, Hank McCoy, Black Bolt, and T'Challa. And I'm going to listen to Steve Rogers, because whenever there's a major divide between us, it never ends well. Steve gets up and asks Carol, what do you think? She questions it, but Hank says he checked all of the data. It's accurate. 
So Carol says, If someone were to come over to you and tell you that a man in the corner has a gun and he's going to shoot everyone, do you check it or ignore it? Tony questions that though. 80%? 60%? What? What percentage of it being true does it have to be for you to act on it? Tony, what if I told you those visions were only 10% correct? You're stating that if there's a 10% chance that Thanos is going to get his hands on a cosmic cube, would I stop him? That's more than enough. And Rhodey would agree. Well, I'd ask him, but... Captain Marvel tells Tony to back off and salutes Captain America before flying through the ceiling and into the skies. Tony stands there with everyone. I have to go public with this. Meanwhile, Carol goes to the woman that they arrested earlier and begins to grill her. Ulysses saw her working with Hydra. Carol can't have this one being the wrong one. The first one to finally prove Tony's research correct. But before she can figure the whole thing out, Nightcrawler teleports in, grabbing the woman and teleporting out. Carol takes her team as she walks out to the landing area of the helicarrier where she sees Tony standing with his side. Steve Rogers, Kate Bishop, Miss Marvel, the X-Men, Thor, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and Vision, just to name a few. Carol looks at him. Tony Stark, you're under arrest. And standing with her are the Inhumans, Magic, Blue Marvel, Shield, and some other X-Men to name a few. Good luck with that, Carol. When the public sees what you've been up to, you're going to have your hands full. What I've been up to, you just broke into a S.H.I.E.L.D. facility. No matter, you're a bit outpowered right now, Carol. Stand down. Carol crosses her arms as the Guardians of the Galaxy jump in to join the fight. The heroes go to war with magic, plasma, blasters, and guns going off all over the place. Carol flies into the sky, blasting Tony's armor in the shoulder, but he uses his other arm to tear into her stomach, throwing her back. Meanwhile, Doctor Strange entangles Storm, wrapping her up tight, but she uses lightning to throw him back and freeze him. Blue Marvel then comes out, cracking Luke Cage across the face, only to have Nova fire into Blue Marvel's face, taking him out of the fight. Except, it didn't actually damage Blue Marvel. So Nova launches into the atmosphere, yelling, Crap, you didn't get burned! Sam will and a magic repair to fight, but she just teleports him across the United States. While Rocket is shooting at everyone, Spider-Man kicks him out of the fight, and then Venom tackles him, telling him, You are not Spider-Man! Star-Lord stands in front of Steve Rogers. Ah, crap, I get the one with the shield? I don't even know why you're here, Quill. I was wondering that myself. Star-Lord looks around. Who's that voice? It's me, Tony Stark. I hacked into your headset. I didn't even know it could be hacked into. We're here to help a friend. She said that you went off the rails and from the schoolyard ganging up crap that you just pulled? I can see that. I thought we were friends, Quill. Yeah, well, I'm better friends with her. But as they're discussing the merits of their friendship, Vision gets electrocuted and is so pissed that he blasts at the enemy, shooting through them because they can phase out, taking out the Guardian spaceship. Rocket is about to cry, but Black Panther grabs Tony Stark and holds him down while Carol soars in, grabbing him by the head and slamming him down! She then backhands him across the jaw, and everyone stops as a vision is displayed by Ulysses, one in which Miles Morales is shown over the dead body of Steve Rogers. Miles falls to his knees in shock. He lifts his mask up, allowing himself to breathe, and tears begin to run down his face. Why would he do that? What's gonna lead to him killing Steve Rogers? Why would he murder one of his idols? And Carol steps forward. Kid, I'm sorry, but you're under arrest. And that concludes the first half of Civil War. Now we tried to cram this all into one video, but we decided that we need to tell you more about what's actually happening, which means instead of just doing the second half of Civil War, we're also gonna be wrapping in the explanations. So the next episode will be out very soon, and I hope you're excited to find out what happens with this, because we're gonna explain everything. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ComicStorian. I'll chat with you guys there any day or night, and I'll see you next time. Same Civil War time, same Civil War channel.